Hi, I'm Ron. And I'm Ka Wait, shouldn't I go first? Why? Because it's Karen and Ron, not Ron and Karen. Oh, is that what we decided? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. It's on the logo, the merch, the title, my contract. All right, fine, fine. So I'm Karen, and cue the music. Wait. No, 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 no. Oh, there he goes, too. Uh, hey, Karen, how's it going? Oh, hey, Ron, how was work? I was pretty busy. Oh, well, this is Friday. Want to come watch this movie with me? All right. Here, move your leg. Let me grab a seat on the couch. Hey. What are you watching? Oh, this cool sci-fi movie called District Alien, The Covenant of Prometheus. Uh-huh. Come on, it's actually pretty cool. See this woman right there? Her? Yeah. She saw an extraterrestrial when she was young, and now she can speak to aliens. Okay. And and that guy? Who, him? No, no, no. The big guy, just off screen now. Oh, oh, that guy in the spacesuit? Yep. He's a space marine, and his job was to find aliens and kill them for the government. Oh, uh, okay. And the, the whole premise of the movie is? Well, the woman wants to communicate with the aliens and make peace but she ends up falling in love with a space marine who has to kill the aliens. Classic love story. Hey, it's pretty inventive. Like, just look at the CGI. The movie looks so realistic, even in space. They did do a pretty good job. I, I'd say the director needs to cool it with the lens flares, though. I mean, just how do they come up with all this stuff? It's so imaginative. I mean, what stuff are you talking about? Like, like the futuristic spaceships? Yeah, that, and the aliens. How do they make up those crazy beings? Well, there's not much to make up with the aliens, Karen. Quiet, Ron. I miss what the Space Marine General just told him. Wait, what did you just say? He told the Space Marine to have no mercy. I told you that aliens aren't entirely sci-fi. Okay, wait a second. Let me pause this. Where's their boat? Uh, oh, right here, right here. Pause it. Pause it. All right, but why? Because you just told me that aliens exist, Ron. What other reason is there? Wait, you didn't know? You didn't know that the government has aliens and they've dissected them and done tests on them? N no, no, I didn't. Well, what's Area 51 all about? You don't know Area 51? I thought that was where the Air Force parks the planes. Well, what about all the alien stuff there? Well, I thought that was a marketing strategy to bring people to the middle of the desert. How else are restaurant owners going to make business? Then how did it start then? What, the alien stuff? Yeah. Um, actually, I... I don't know. Well, it's because aliens are stored there, in the base at Area 51. What? Ron, don't joke with me. I'm not. So aliens have come to Earth and the government has captured them and stored them in a military base? That's the long and short of it, yeah. Okay, Ron. You have to explain yourself a little bit with this one. But don't you want to watch your movie? Leave that pause for now. Try and change my mind. Well, this is a big topic because there is a bunch of stuff to talk about in regards to aliens. I think it's best if we focus on Area 51 for now, and then we can expand beyond that when we're ready. Jeez, it sounds like you're introducing a 15-week course. Just tell me about the aliens. Okay, okay, okay. Area 51 is the hot spot for aliens because that is where the government stores all of the bodies that they've found from crash landings and the broken ships that they're actively trying to re-engineer using our own technologies. And why Area 51? Well, Area 51 is a detachment of Edwards Air Force Base in Nevada, though the CIA calls the area Homie Base and Groom Lake. The only reference to Area 51 in official government documentation is a classified document from the Vietnam War, which probably refers to some numerical value the government uses to identify the base. But we're not entirely sure. Because the government is really hush-hush about it? 
And why wouldn't they be? If that is really where they're storing everything, why not have a place with a bunch of different names across many documents that no one, except for some key people, know the exact location of? It's the perfect place to store the alien stuff. A secret restricted base in the middle of the desert at the southern shore of a big lake. But you say you don't even know that it even is Area 51 where they're storing all this alien stuff. True, but it is the most likely candidate, and I'd say even more important to consider is that we don't know the exact location of the stuff in the base, where they're actually keeping and testing the aliens. There are vast networks of tunnels and rooms and hangars underneath the base, deep within the ground. And the restricted perimeter is miles and miles long, so just imagine how far down those structures span underneath the ground. We could say that Area 51 is the site of alien testing, but we're not sure where within the structure it even takes place. That's what I mean by location. So Area 51 could even be a small piece of the base? Highly plausible. In fact, the entire Edwards base is of high secrecy and is frequently associated with projects like laser beam weaponry, and that's now starting to be seen publicly. Laser beams, like Star Wars? Yeah, well, these you can't actually see, but they can be used to interrupt missile signals and disable them. There are developments in creating large space lasers placed on the ground in areas where large telescopes are so that they can shoot beams and destroy clutter in space and around the Earth's orbit. Because a lot of junk from previous launches into space are just floating around and are very dangerous to astronauts and satellites orbiting around the planet. Huh, that's actually pretty cool. It is. And technology like that is coming into public knowledge now. So imagine what secrets are placed within the vaults of Area 51. We're still trying to find out. It was only in 2005 that citizens filed a court order under the Freedom of Information Act. What's that? The FOIA? I like how you use the acronym as if you use it all the time. <laughs> you you want to know about the FOIA? I'll tell you about the FOIA. Just tell me that you need more information about the FOIA. All right, all right. Tell me about the FOIA. Yeah, yeah, no problem. The, the Freedom of Information Act is a federal information law that citizens can use of their own accord in order to request some or all disclosure about previously unreleased information from the government. In 2005, citizens filed an order to get more information about Area 51. It wasn't completed until June of 2013, though. That's eight more years of secret government testing. And why not just release the files upon request? I mean, Edwards Air Force Base has been in commission since 1933. Because the government doesn't understand the meaning of timely? <laughs> true, that's, that's true. But what about needing some time to formulate a response to what has been going on at that base for 80 years? Huh. So you think they were just trying to hide their tracks then? Again, highly plausible. Okay. Do you have anything that is highly plausible? Plausible? Seems like it would be the root word of plausible, like readable. Well... Plausible is an adjective, and it has no able in it. It's an ible with an I. That kind of sounds like an able. I don't know. English is weird. <laughs> well, it is kind of a mud of a language. German, French, Celtic, Greek, Latin. I guess that's what makes it special, right? One of a kind. But to get back on your point, there are some big examples of aliens visiting the Earth. The biggest one, and the one that opened up Area 51 as the site of alien testing, was Roswell in 1947. It was during the summer where a group of people spotted a flying disc hovering in the sky above Roswell, New Mexico. It did so for some time and then crash landed, having people believe that aliens crashed near the desert outskirts of the small town. Then what happened? Well, after that, the government and military went to clean up the site. To hush the public, they initially claimed that this was some kind of weather balloon testing, and apparently it was good enough to wane the public eye. Okay, but you said initially. Is there more? Yeah, yeah. The Roswell incident picked up more traction in the 1970s as more things in media were inspired by the story of the flying saucer. Ufologists. Ufologists? People that study UFOs. So you can just throw ologists behind anything and make it a field worth of study? <laughs> why, of course. That's why I think you should be a please stop interrupting me ologist. That's cute. Please continue. So ufologists claim that the crash was indeed an alien ship and that it was being tracked by the military, and upon crashing, the government was able to quickly be on site to remove the body and clear all foreign debris. As I mentioned, this idea started to pick up speed, and people reignited their search into the happenings of the incident at Roswell and at Area 51. 
It took decades until the 1990s before the government responded by claiming that the flying saucer again was a balloon, part of something called Project Mogul, where microphone detectors were placed on high-flying balloons to listen for Soviet atomic bomb testing. And that sounds pretty legit. Yeah, but why not just reveal the truth when it picked up speed in the first place and shut it down right away? Wouldn't that make more sense? Sure, but at that point in the 60s and 70s, it was in the middle of the Cold War. I guess they couldn't risk the Soviets knowing what was going on. But they could risk it near the end of the Cold War in the 90s? The military had probably developed better technologies for seeking out bombs at that point then. It wasn't as important. Okay, but Project Mogul occurred only two years after World War II in 1947. When the crash occurred, they were testing, right? Right. So why did it take nearly 50 years to allow the public access to the findings of the project? I mean, now we know about like the new aircraft Lockheed Martin is building for the Air Force to revamp the fleet. Isn't that sensitive information? I don't see your point. I mean, just think about it. The government, after the Freedom of Information Act, which was published in 1977, by the way, you'd think that it would be more open with this kind of information? But the government has to keep secrets to keep people safe. No, no, I understand that. But does it now matter that we know about a failed project from the 40s? No, no, not really. So why did it take so long to release that information? Because they're hiding something. It has to be, right? Wait, was... Was that sarcastic? Nope, not at all. <laughs> Alrighty then, jokester. What about the actual footage of the alien autopsy after the Roswell crash? It was released in 1995 by a guy named Ray Santilli, and it shows an actual alien on a table being cut open by scientists. And it is most likely being done in Area 51, not too far away from the Roswell crash site. Look up the footage on YouTube. Santilli, S-A-N-T-I-L-L-I, alien autopsy. And you'll see it right there. Okay, let me look it up. Santilli, you said. Who even is this guy? He's the CEO of Orbital Media Group. All right, I pulled the video up on my phone. Hey, wait, Ron, how is there any way the cameras in 1947 are this clear and so easy to move? Well, this is a video recreation of the actual video. So it's a fake. Well, no, it's based on the true video. It's just with actors and a dummy alien. Oh, so, so it's a fake. It's a fake, yeah. But, but listen, it's an insight into what goes on in Area 51. Yeah, but the video isn't real. So it only hurts your point that aliens exist and are in possession of the government. Okay, then. Does this piece of evidence hurt my point? What evidence? Uh, the evidence that the government spent $22 million from 2007 to 2008 on alien research, what they called anomalous aerospace threats. UFOs? Exactly. The government established the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, and its job was not to find, but to identify extraterrestrial threats that entered American airspace. And you make that find versus identify distinction why? Because it's an identification program. It was created in response to something. Think back to Roswell, and it is also responding to multiple official inquiries into the, quote, anomalous aerospace threats that occurred across the 50s and the 60s. And of course, that's just what we know, because the AATIP or ATIP was not a classified project. So there could be more. Highly plausible. Highly plausible. I mean, just look at all this evidence, Kieran. And a fake video. <laughs> and a recreated video. But seriously, there is a lot of secrecy relating to UFOs and alien research at Area 51 and, and everything that we just talked about. If there wasn't anything behind this stuff and the government doesn't really have anything related to extraterrestrials, why all the secrets? It won't matter at that point, right? Just release the information and, and all the information and make it completely undoubtable that there is anything related to aliens. But there is something. There has to be. Because there are these secrets. And there are a lot of them. That is a good point, but can we just finish the movie now? Sure. Let's resume the odyssey of the space marine and the alien translator. But before that, I want to ask, do you believe me? Thank you for listening to an episode of Karen and Ron. A podcast miniseries from the logs. Please like. Follow. And subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts. Check out our merch store 
with fresh styles inspired by the logs. Get a transcription of the episode by listening on YouTube. And above all, remember to laugh a little. Nailed it. Well, Area 51 is a detachment of Edwards Air Force Base in Nevada, um, though the CIA calls the area Horny Base. I don't know and if you、Room、glitched,、Lake. but instead of Homey, I heard Horny. Instead of Homey Base, I heard Horny Base. I don't know if you. I、oh, don't、really? know if you、okay. glitched、well. though. Hold on. Okay. Well, let me repeat that、okay. anyway.